Here is what you will need in order to connect an internal IDE or PATA zip drive to your modern Windows 10 PC. You will need a Windows 10 computer, a power supply to turn on the zip drive, an internal IDE zip drive. Any zip drive capacity will do, from 100 megabytes, 250 megabytes, or 750 megabyte capacities. Ensure that you follow the jumper settings and jump rate to the master setting. Finally, an IDE to USB cable. Take note that the IDE to USB adapter that you choose to use must only contain an IDE and USB connection. If your adapter looks something like this, where there is an additional SATA connector on the adapter, this method will not work. A second note for people who are using ZIP100 drives. Ensure that your connector is indeed an IDE connector. If you see this at the back of your drive where there are a total of 50 pins, then what you have is a SCSI internal zip drive. This method will not work with SCSI devices. Certain IDE ZIP100 drives also have no support for the ATAPI protocol set, so this method may not work for very early model internal ZIP100 drives. Stick around to the later half of the video for more exploration on this IDE to USB adapter technique. Step 1. Plug the power connector into the zip drive. Step 2. Connect the IDE end of the USB to IDE adapter into your zip drive. It should only go in one way. Step 3. Turn on your power supply. Step 4. Plug the USB end into the computer. Step 5. Insert the zip disk. You should now see that the zip disk will be mounted on your computer. You can proceed to read and write to the disk as if it was a thumb drive. When you are done, remember to eject the disk. The method that I've shown thus far allows you to be able to access your zip disk using any IDE or internal zip drive connected to any modern PC. The operating systems that support this method includes anything higher than Windows XP, such as Windows Vista, 7, 8, and 10. However, without any additional iOmega software or drivers, you could encounter some problems accessing disks that have been protected. Here I have three zip disks. One is a standard zip disk. The second one has been write protected. The third one has both read and write protection. Read and write protected zip disk will not appear on the computer at all. The computer will just tell me that my disk has not been prepared correctly. If I were to use a write protected disk, you, I notice that I can access the files present in the disk, which is good if I would like to back up and copy my old information out. But it is not so good if I want to reuse the zip disk for putting in new files. This problem is commonly encountered when you want to try to access a zip disk using a modern computer such as those running Windows Vista, 7, 8, or 10. If you would like to remove the protection present in this zip disk, there are several ways you can do it. You can either connect the IDE zip drive back into your old machine and boot up any operating system that is Windows XP and or older, or you can use VirtualBox or any other virtualization software to load up any of the older operating systems that can have access to iOmegaWare. iOmegaWare for USB zip drives is available for operating systems such as Windows 98 Second Edition, Windows 2000, Windows ME, and Windows XP. If your virtual machine is running Windows 2000 or Windows XP, it's just a simple matter of plug and play. No additional drivers are needed other than the iOmega software. If you're using Windows 98, you will have to install additional drivers. In my case, my adapter is known as the Mycin Sentry Incorporated USB Mass Storage Device. I found the drivers online, and I simply installed it into my Windows 98 machine, and I'm able to access this information via USB. Using iOmegaWare, you can remove the write and read protection of many of these zip disks, either temporarily or permanently. You can use other features such as long formatting zip cartridges or taking a look at the cartridge format and disk health status.
The nice thing about using one of these adapters over here is that this solution not only works for PCs, but it can also work for your Apple computers, provided that it has some form of USB support. This goes for earlier computers such as this PowerBook G4 over here, and it can even work for more modern computers such as Intel iMacs or even the Apple M1 iMac today. Unfortunately, I do not have any access to any Apple M1 iMacs, so I can't really judge exactly whether the thing would work properly in a modern M1 iMac computer, but my suspicion is that, that if you use this adapter to connect to a modern M1 iMac, you should be able to see that the thing would identify your zip drive as a removable disk drive and you can use it similar to how you would use a flash drive. You will not have any access to any support from iOmegaWare and I think emulation support for M1 Max is currently not so good. But I believe that with time, more emulation software should be able to be released so that you can run iOmegaWare on older operating systems that's emulated in your M1 computer. If you own an Apple Macintosh computer that does not contain any USB support, chances are that this computer will contain a DB25 SCSI connector at the back of the machine. If you own one of these old computers, the easiest way to connect a zip drive to it is to use an external SCSI zip drive such as these ones. They will release in either 100MB and 250MB capacities, and you can even daisy chain together into one SCSI port so that you can use both drives at the same time. Another alternative is that if you are able to open up the computer and you realize that there's an internal IDE connector, you can of course connect an IDE zip drive directly to the IDE connector in one of these older Macintosh computers. If you do own an Apple computer with USB support, then the connection using this USB to IDE adapter is simplified. You will need to upgrade your computer to macOS 8.6 and above before you can use this USB to IDE adapter. Anything else that's lower than 8.6 such as 8.5 will require you to use one of these genuine USB zip drives instead since the adapter is not recognized by any of these older operating systems. Even then, iOmega in the past released statements recommending users to upgrade to at least 8.5 and above. The steps to connecting a USB to ID adapter to a zip drive to your iMac computer is very similar to those that is done on the PC as well. The only difference is that you will see that you can read and write to many of these zip disks. However, iOmegaWare will be unable to detect the zip drive that's connected in this manner. Therefore, if you do have to use iOmegaWare for using macOS 8.6 all the way to macOS 9.2, it is recommended to use a genuine USB zip drive instead. Chances are that if you own one of these older Mac computers with USB support, it should be able to upgrade to some version of macOS 10. Once you are able to run Mac OS X, you have access to many versions of iOmegaWare that could detect the zip drive connected in using the USB to ID adapter. The version of iOmegaWare shown is able to run on any PowerPC Mac that has Mac OS version 10.1, 10.2, 10.3, 10.4, and 10.5. If you own an Apple computer that is running on an Intel processor instead, you can still use the USB to ID adapter to connect the zip drive directly to the computer. However, since iOmegaWare was never released for any Intel version of Apple computers, the unfortunate thing is that you will not have access to iOmegaWare using an Intel based machine. The good news is that since you are using an Intel based Mac, there's plenty of virtualization software available for such computers. The cool thing about this is that this is very useful if you let's say have a zip disk that is formatted using the macOS extended format and it is password protected. You can connect your zip drive to the Windows 2000 virtualization system, unlock your zip disk from there and then after that reconnect it back to your Apple Macintosh computer to access the files present. Thank you so much for your kind attention for this video. Uh, if there's any questions that you would like to ask about what has been said so far, or if there's any new findings that you'd like to present, do let me know and I will see you guys next time.